Well, small launch leader Rocket Lab is set to begin construction on its engine test facility for its reusable neutron rocket. That will take place at the Senate Space Center in Mississippi. Local officials hoping the facility will bolster the U.S.'s aerospace competitiveness. Here in studio, we've got Rocket Lab founder and CEO Peter Beck. Peter, great to talk to you on the back of what was a very eventful investor day. Let's start with a 10 year lease mm. at the NASA test site in Mississippi. Um, obviously, there was already a big footprint there yeah. um, for this space, but what does this particular location mean in terms of your ability to build on Rocket Lab's ambitions? Yeah, so, you know, we're developing Neutron, which is a, you know, a medium to large launch vehicle. And uh, in order to, to test engines quickly and efficiently, you need very large infrastructure. So we're super fortunate to be able to leverage a government asset, you know, previous government asset. Uh, and, you know, it would, it would take you half a decade to build that infrastructure there. So um, our ability to kind of come in there and take over that infrastructure really accelerates our program um, and accelerates the, the timeline for us to be able to deliver, you know, Neutron, um, you know, to, to the market. So for us, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's a really significant um, uh, piece of, you know, asset and, and, and time reduction. Yeah, Neutron, obviously, that, that next step in terms of where the company is headed. What mm. does the timeline look like for launch on that right now? Yeah, we're trying to get something on the pad by 2024, um, which is a pretty aggressive timeline. Uh, but, you know, given that um, it's, it's a similar kind of time frame that we developed Electron, our, our, you know, the rocket that we launched now, and we're leveraging a lot of the things that are on our current launch vehicle uh, that, that port basically directly across to Neutron. So, you know, the avionics and software don't care what size the rocket is. Um, so there's a whole bunch of stuff we move directly across. And, you know, this isn't our first rodeo. We, you know, we, we, we've, we've done this before. So um, that gives us confidence we can meet those timelines. In the meantime, your core business, obviously looking at um, the Electron launch here, you've obviously now looked at Virginia as sort of the key spot, but you've now gone through what, is it 30? 30 launches. 30 yeah. successful launches. Um, in terms of small satellites, how big is that market and how quickly is it expanding for you right now? Yeah, so the, the total launch market is around about a $20 billion TAM. Um, and small launch is obviously you know, a segment of that. Um, but by having the, the Electron launch vehicle, which is, you know, as you mentioned, you know, leading the market on small launch, when we bring on Neutron, it really gives us about 85% of the addressable market we can, hmm. we, we can actually address with those two launch vehicles. And so uh, you mentioned that the TAM, specifically the total addressable mm. market expanding, significantly over the next few years. Does that incorporate those two pieces that you just mentioned? Yeah, so I think it's important. Most, most people think of Rocket Lab as a launch company, and uh, it's probably something to do with the name. Um, but the reality is that two thirds of our revenue actually come from our space systems division. So while, while launch is a very important element of the company and it's, it is the enabler and we've got uh, you know, a very active rocket program, actually the space systems part of our, our business is bigger than our rocket business. So what we're trying to build here is, is, is actually an end-to-end -end space company where you, you know, customers come to us uh, and we build their satellites, we launch their satellites, and sometimes we even manage their satellites on orbit for them. Uh, you are a publicly traded company. You came through market through right. a SPAC. We have seen a significant downturn in the equity mm. space overall, but especially in some of these high growth spaces that aren't necessarily yep. profitable. How are you trying to balance the ambitions that will ultimately mean just more costs, more investment, at a time when investors are saying, when are we going to get to that point where it's profitable? Yeah. So I think the, 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 the big difference between Rocket Lab and, and many others in this place is that we have a product and we have a real business, we're generating cash, uh, and you know we have a clear path to profitability. Uh, you know, Neutron is the is is the only thing that's that, that's really consuming cash within the business at this point in time. Um, you know, Electron, as you mentioned, we've launched it 30 times, uh, and you know, our space systems business is is doing very well as well. So I guess the big difference between us and and, and others is is that you know we 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 actually have a real business, and um, you know we use that that spec process and the proceeds. We we overfunded ourselves. You know, we um, you know we we. We you know, funded ourselves to the tune of 770 million, um, and uh, we spent about 180 million on acquisitions, building uh, you know building a lot of robustness into the company, and we have a very very healthy balance sheet, so we have no liquidity issues, and we're fully funded. So I guess you know that that's the major difference between probably us and, and a lot of others in the space that mm. came to market with a dream, uh, we came to market with a product and a real business. I do have to ask you about the dream though, because mm. uh, maybe not the focus of shareholders, but the probe called the Venus Life Finder. Mm. This is the first private mission to Venus. Yes. May 2023 is what we've heard before. Yep. Are you on track for that timeline? And, and what specifically 
does Venus offer? For those who are sure. saying, well, what is there to explore there? Yeah, so I mean, this is a, a, a very much a philanthropic mission. We have a lot of partners involved in this mission uh, from MIT, the, you know, the science team. And, uh, and, and basically, the, the whole point of this is that uh, with the discovery of phosphine in the atmosphere of Venus, that is a, a bio you know, life sign marker. Uh, and you know, we recently went to the moon with our, our, our lunar photon mission for NASA, and that that really you know built the the spacecraft that it's a, that it is enabled to go to Venus. So we have the hardware, we have the the capability to go to Venus, um, and. If you have the opportunity to determine is there life outside Earth or not, that's a pretty big, pretty big opportunity and pretty big thing to do. So, uh, so we're doing it in nights and weekends, and and uh, you know we'll, we'll see if we get in 2023. It's not the priority of the company, yeah. uh, but but certainly uh, you know if we could um, even help try and prove that there is life outside Earth. I think that would be a pretty monumental discovery if, if, if we could make it happen. Yeah, you said it's a passion project, but certainly a lot of people interested. It is fascinating to see mm. the exploration part of all this. Peter, it's good to have you in studio it's today. It's great to be here. Thank you.